Well, good morning, fifth graders. Welcome to our first video lesson. Now that I understand how to post lessons in Canvas and use the program uh, the way it's supposed to be used, I'm um, figuring some stuff out and we can do stuff like this now. <clears throat> it really helped my wife had one of these little boards here. I can sit here and teach you something and real easily, real easily done. Okay, you guys, what I want to start today is a sword in the stone. Okay, you've all heard probably of the legend, <clears throat> King Arthur. Uh, that's where Excalibur comes from. Okay, it's one of the names for the story. The sword, <clears throat> only King Arthur can pull out. And actually, King Arthur is a child. It's an interesting story. What you can do is look it up, and you can see the Disney movie, Sword in the Stone, that came out in 1963. It's a cartoon. It's a fun watch, a little bit of history about a legend that was written in the 1600s. Okay, so, boys and girls, we'll be studying the Sword in the Stone today. What we're studying in art, though, is the art element of space. When you study the art element of space, boys and girls, some things are close, some things are far. If you remember last year, we did the desert landscape. Okay, that is a good example of that, where the cactus were in front of the hill. Okay, we're going to do the same thing today in that our <clears throat> sword that we draw will be in front of a nice horizon and landscape We'll draw mountains in the background and things. As usual, in my art lessons, you guys, you're welcome to change it any way you want. As long as I see overlapping, then go for it. Okay, we're going to draw this together today. And if you want to get out some paper another time and uh, draw your own, it doesn't have to be a sword sticking in stone, you know can be a toothbrush sitting in a cup with a mirror in the background. You know, you can really, really do some cool stuff, kid art. So you guys, when we study shape, I'm sorry, space, when we study the art element of space, we're talking about overlapping, okay? When you overlap, it tells you that one thing is close and one thing is far. The expo marker is closer to you than the ruler because it overlaps. You can't see the ruler behind the expo marker, right? When you start doing that, it starts building up layers and layers and layers of what ends up looking like 3D, okay? Another thing I'd like to try to work on today, boys and girls, when we're done with our drawings, is to work on the art element of value. Okay. Value is just the lights and darks. When you start adding shadows to your drawings, it looks really, really good. I see the things you guys are turning in already, and <clears throat> it, I see a lot of it, and that makes me want to do a lesson on value, because you can take those drawings, add a little bit of value to it. I see value right now. It, as I look at this TV screen, I'm watching myself teach, or the computer monitor, all right? Half my side, half of my face is dark and half is light because I'm sitting in front of a window. When you add the shadow to your objects and create a light source, then you start making it look 3D, okay? And so you, it improves the quality of your drawing. Now, what we're going to start with today is drawing the sword. And I don't know how many of you have rulers, okay? If you looked at the directions uh, in Canvas for this, it says you need pencil, paper, something to color with, markers or crayons, and, and a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, you can still use a straight edge. You guys, the edge of a book is a, is a ruler. The edge of a phone is a ruler. That can be a ruler. Any straight edge. Boys and girls, you can even use a pencil as a ruler. See? But 
lay a pencil down to draw a line. So what you could call that is a straight edge. Even a folded piece of paper, long ways, hot dog style, fold it two or three times and tape it, you have a ruler. Okay, or a straight edge, I should say. So put these pencils back and we'll need them for this. So now what we're going to do is start our lesson of sword and stone. And I'm going to take this handy dandy little thing here that my wife found for me at a garage sale. Turn it around. Now we've got a polar bear and a snowstorm. Polar bear and a snowstorm, get it? Come on. Polar bears are white, snowstorms are white. Don't make me don't make me explain my jokes, okay? Alright. So you guys. I got a ruler here I'm gonna use. We're gonna start with the sword, okay? So here we go. My sword is gonna be about this long here. Well, you'll see. This is your paper, right? You just have to trace the left and the right side of your straight edge. Okay. Or just put two lines. And so I'm just gonna do this. So it's a little more like that, and I'll go like this. The only time, well, we'll use it one more time, but that's all you need to use for the road right now, okay? So that's our sword. We have to put a line here because it's going into the sort of stone, okay? Also, we have to draw the stone now. And that is going to be this right here. Some of you kids that are really on the ball, you're going to see that we're overlapping already. The sword is in front of the rock. So, stone, I should call. Small little detail here might help. Some kids like to draw the cracks in the, in the uh, the cracks in the, uh, Stone, right? Some come up that way. All right. So, if anybody's ever played softball or baseball, I know you guys have. When you swing your bat, a bat has a knob on the end. You know why that knob's there? You don't? Okay, I'll tell you. When you swing your bat, it won't come out of your hand. So when you swing it, it won't fly out of your hand and hurt somebody. So if you grip it good and strong, you can swing it back. So here, you need a knob. Swords will usually have one of these. There's a knob on the end of my sword. Also, when you have a sword in your hand and you're using it and you go to thrust forward, say you're going to stab a dragon or something, and the sword hits a bone, you don't want you don't want your hand sliding forward on your knife, your sword. You cut your hand out. Your fingers will just drop off the ground. So what we have to do, I'm going to take my straight edge again, like this, okay? And I'm going to do that, 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 okay? That's the crossbar. I like to draw this line all the way through. Yeah, this line has to go all the way through. So you guys, what I can do here is these swords have something like this on it. Okay. That one's not pretty good. Where's my eraser? Oh, there it is. There we go. That is the crossbar on a sword. Now, also, if anybody has ever played, you know, like, 
golf or sometimes baseball. You know, they put the, the wrap on the bat, the handle of the bat, the tape, and so fingers can grab something. Swords had the same thing. So I'm just going to do this. This was probably made of leather. So that's our handle. Actually, it should come over a little bit. I might have to switch. Uh, Expo marker needs to be recharged. How can I do that now? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Much better. Okay. That's a hand on our sword. So that when you're in a sword fight, your sweat doesn't get slippery. Hand. Some of these swords had rubies on them, designs. I'm going to put two rubies on each side. You can color these any kind of color you want, nice and bright. Now, you don't have to do that. Some kids will use their initials because the sword was made for them, right? I mean, back in the Middle Ages, you had to go find a swordsman and make you a sword. And they put their name on it. Another thing that looks good here, boys and girls, is a line down the center of the sword, okay? Because that means it's raised just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot right in the middle here. I'll put a dot right in the middle here. Then I'll connect it up. Yay. So that's sort of looking pretty good if you ask me. Now, the sword's been there a long time. And if you noticed on the homepage for the fifth grade project this week, you see a drawing of a sword in the stone. And what has happened is the vine has grown over the sword. Okay. Around it, around it. So, to do that, we have to do some erasing first, okay? Because the vine is going to go in front of the sword and then go in back of the sword. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to erase some of the rock, then we'll go there and there. Okay, that's where the vine's going to go. You can rewind this a bunch of times. Go back and see how I did it, all right? When I teach this part in school, a lot of kids are, hey, so I'm going to start it right here. Just with a vine growing out of the rock that's been there so long. So I'm going to go like this. the vine growing around it. See how I did that? First I erased the spots and then I just drew the vine like that. Okay. Now, of course, now you guys can just rewind this and see me do that again. And you'll be fine. Some kids make this a snake. Okay, then you wouldn't have this there. You'd have the tail of you'd have the tail of the snake. On your vine, you can do it's a little bit of the sword there, see? So I can come in with a flower, a leaf. That's our vine, okay. You can color that green or something, or make it a snake. All right, that's coming along really good. Now, I want 
to use some more vocabulary on you. As you can see, we started this lesson with overlapping, right? Overlapping tells us that one thing is closer, one thing's farther, all right? Now we've got the vine growing around the sword there. Looks really good. Who can tell me what a horizon line is? Oh, I hear some of you get it. Yeah. The line that separates the sky and the ground. It's on the horizon line that where the mountains go, right? You don't need a ruler or a straight edge for a horizon line. Oh, I'm going to put that there. Okay. On top of the horizon line, like I just mentioned, we should draw some mountains. Okay. Don't be afraid about drawing mountains, okay? A lot of my kids always say, can you draw your mountains for me? Can you draw? No, draw your mountain. Just make everyone different. Okay, so let's try this. I'm not going to start my mountain here. I don't want to start there because it's, we want to see part of another mountain that's already there. Kind of looks like Red Mountain there, huh? Okay, I'm going to take this one all the way down to there. And this one is going to go up. However, over here, another mountain range over there. So this should probably go right into that. Now we've got some cool mountains out there. Sometimes kids like to draw snow on mountains. You know how to do that? good now. One more thing. Another feature you can add here is either a road or a river. Okay. Kids like to maybe add both because then you can have a bridge going over the river. So let's see here. Here comes the river. Remember, over here, the river's far away, very far. So it's very narrow. You start from the same spot, and as you get closer, you get wider and wider. There's our river. Now we can have a road coming in that can make a bridge over the water. All right. So, let's see here. Don't forget, boys and girls, I don't want you to forget what I'm teaching you here, and that is the arc element of space. We're overlapping, showing some things that have distance. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to put a road in now. It's got to go behind the sword, so it's going to get a little bit tricky. So let's do this. Save some room for the bridge that we put in later. <clears throat> okay. Now we come over here. Remember what I said. Far away, it just looks like one line. Okay, so you got to start the road with the same spot. And then as you get closer, it gets wider and wider. Now, let's see. 
I don't draw too many bridges. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Where's my eraser? Oh, oh, there it is. All right, now bridge. A bridge over the water. Great. Okay. Uh, as you can see, what we've done here, there are things that are very close. Very close. You might even want to put some detail on the things that are close, right? <coughs> Excuse me. You can add a little bit of texture on your snake. All right. <coughs> what a lot of kids like to do. Let me start with what I was talking about. This close stuff here, you can add details on. Uh, you might have some, might have a tree here. This is gonna look good. Erase part of the road. And now you've got a little tree growing. From the road, and maybe there's another tree over here on the other side of the road. You gotta be careful about things like this, boys and girls. I don't know if you can see, but see my line doesn't connect. You know, it, you gotta make sure it's believable. All right. Okay, got a few more minutes. Let's see. Also, we have things that are very close. Then there's the rock that's a little further away. The road comes in. I'm not gonna put a line down the middle like this on the road, right? Because if this is medieval times. It was just dirt road. You just call your road brown. That's a dirt road. Some kids like to add houses that are connected to this road. Uh, start with a square. Put a roof on it. Then you can do this. Chimney. <clears throat> Smoke coming out of the chimney. A uh, bush along the side of the house. And you can add all the details you want, you guys. Uh, I might even just put another house over here. Details, add all the details you want, you guys. <laughs> I've had kids add UFOs landing, you know, and these smoke should go off the screen. <clears throat> this again is a river. <coughs> Excuse me. That's going to be blue. Another cool, okay. Then you have the road. <clears throat> Further than that is the horizon line. Okay. Then you have a mountain. That's the closest mountain. Further away, further away, furthest away. Okay. Now we can draw stuff that's even further away. It's a cloud. Now, cloud over there. I'm going to put 
half a cloud over here because some of them are partly out of the picture. So, you guys, when you start adding color to this, even now it looks good. If you don't have colors at home, don't worry about it. You're done. But uh, a lot of times in school, kids will get this far in one day, and then when they come back the next week for half an hour, they do a different one. Because typically in class, of course, you know that we do this on one day. We're almost done with class right now. We do this, and then the next week you come in, you get out the colors, and you work on it. Okay, So do your best at coloring it. Uh, it will really bring it to life. You might consider adding purple to your mountains because the giant blue sky is is actually a giant blue light and it's shining blue light down on the surface of the earth you don't see it because the sun is so bright if you go up north you look at the snow in the winter time and if you look at the shadows if there's a blue sky overhead the shadows will be blue blue shadows anyway you got that blue light shining down from the sky and then you have the dust in the air and maybe a sunset with red light. What do you get when you mix blue and red? Purple. So when you color your mountains, add purple to them. You can even add some details to your mountains like this. This thing's drying up on me. I mean, you can have little valleys and stuff. the sun over here okay uh, one thing you can do I'm not using a pencil right now is that you can add you can put the shadow on the on the right side of your mountains right side of your mountains add shadow and that's when you scribble on a piece of paper like that, add some, add some pencil marks to, a piece to, to it, and then you rub your finger on it. And you get a nice shadow. You don't see pencil marks anymore. So what I do is I, with my pencil, you know, see the sun's here. So the shadow would be on the other side of the moon. So you shadow. The right side of each moon. Maybe even a shadow of the house on the ground. Uh, <clears throat> also, you can shadow the right side of the sword. Rub your finger on that a little bit if you want after you add your pencil. That will be like when you're in. You can be done now if you want. You don't have brains. Whatever you want to do. But uh, <clears throat> this is definitely a fun one, and I'm excited to see how you're, you, you guys do. I just want to uh, say that on this week's modules, you guys look at for the lessons. I have directions on how to take a picture with your uh, device that you have. So some of you already know how to do that. I'm getting a lot of submissions from kids photographing their art with their camera, and it looks great. If you have any questions, please contact me. I will come and help you out somehow. Not come, but uh, <clears throat> help you out with email. Just email me if you have any questions. My email is right there at Canvas. You can contact me. So, boys and girls, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see you next week. And take care of yourself. Stay safe. And keep working on that as much as you want. Keep working and working on it. It's up to you. you know, Take a picture when you're done and send it to me. I'm excited to see how it turns out. So take care, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Bye.